チョコレートアイスクリームマカロンいちごのショートケーキかわいいものみんなみんな溶けて私の一部になればいいみんなみんな私になればいい It is a moment you've all been waiting for. Orzo TikTok is here. Over the next few weeks, we'll be posting so many Orzo recipes that you'll be dreaming of Orzo. Because Orzo is everything. It is impossible to put into words why Orzo is so perfect. It just is. It deserves to be put on a pedestal, to be celebrated. It is the champion of pastas. In many ways, Orzo is life. If you're looking for Orzo inspiration, this is your home. Welcome to Orzo TikTok. The first recipe in this series is our roasted pepper and chili thought Orzo. It's unbelievably good and very affordable. Let's get to it. First up, add three cube peppers and a punnet of cherry tomatoes to a roasting tin. Add a glug of olive oil, season generously, and roast at 180 for 25 minutes. Next up, just slice up your garlic, cut your chili thought into chunks, and slice up your chili. Add your chili thought to the pan and fry until it starts crisping. Then add your garlic and your chili, fry until fragrant, and then add 500 ml of passata and 750 ml of water. Now pour in your orzo. Cook on a gentle simmer and stir occasionally to prevent sticking. Once the peppers are soft and charred, remove from the oven and add to the al dente orzo. Add a handful of chopped basil and parsley and stir everything together. Season and you're good to go. Serve into bowls, top with more freshly chopped herbs, drizzle some olive oil, and get stuck in. Enjoy, mob. So, today I'm going to show you how I make my super crispy fried chicken wraps. We're going to start with a simple marinade, and don't worry if you don't have any buttermilk, you can just use some milk and lemon juice. So, cut some chicken breasts into thin strips and let that marinate for a few hours. Now, while that's in the fridge, if you want to be a little bit extra like me, you can make some homemade spicy mayo. And then, once you've made the flour coating with a bunch of spices, you're ready to dip. Okay, so the trick to getting that crispy, flaky coating is to double or even triple dip between the marinade and flour, and then leaving it to sit for about five minutes so it doesn't come apart when you're frying. And then once The oil is hot enough, you want to fry them for about five or six minutes until they're nice and golden like this. And then you can just make the wraps. So fill your tortilla, add some sliced cheese, then wrap it up like I'm showing you here. And then obviously, you want to toast it and melt the cheese. So fry it on a pan on both sides, and you're done. Just look at how cheesy that is. Honestly, you guys need to try this. And head over to my Instagram if you want to see how you can make these without frying. Big dots are amazing, and I love them, but sometimes you don't have 20 minutes to wait for your breakfast to cook. So instead, let's make this cinnamon roll mug cake that's packed with protein and takes one minute to cook in the microwave. Combine the wet ingredients in a mug and then add your dry ingredients. For the protein, I'm using Four Sigmatics plant based protein powder. Their vanilla flavor is so good and works perfectly with this mug cake. Stir everything together and try not to spill. I did not spill and was very proud of myself. Top it with brown sugar and cinnamon and swirl it to give it the cinnamon roll look. Then microwave it for one minute. And if you want some icing on top, just combine some powdered sugar and milk. Look at this texture. I'm obsessed with this mug cake and it's perfect when you're on、I'm、the go. I'm actually waiting to get my COVID test results. And because they're really quick, I was challenged to make these pizza stuffed sticks in under 30 minutes. Now, I'm making something called a 10 minute dough. And you basically just mix all these ingredients in a bowl. And then you let them rise for 10 minutes. And then you add the flour until you get a dough. I'm doing this to show you guys how quick it is to get your COVID test done, and they're actually free with easy access for students. You might not know this, but one in three people with coronavirus don't actually present their symptoms, so it's always safe to know for sure. Anyways, back to the pizza dough. I just cut them up into these long, wide rectangles, I filled them with some pizza sauce and mozzarella cheese, and then wrapped them up like this. Then I just brushed them with that garlic butter that I made and baked them until they were nice and golden. It was a bit of a challenge to get this done in under half an hour while the results came out, but that's I thought my、it. mom would always make garlic bread for iftar time, and this is definitely my favorite way to make garlic bread. Combine room temperature butter, minced garlic, parsley, and chives. Slice up any baguette that you can get from the fresh bakery section of your grocery store. Spread out some of the garlic herb butter, add fresh mozzarella cheese, and then broil these in the oven for three to four minutes. And that's it the easiest, crunchy, cheesy garlic Next bread. Next time someone tells you that you can't lose weight and eat delicious food at the same time, I need you to bark at them and make these quinoa sushi bowls. So, start by marinating your shrimp. I recommend using uncooked shrimp for this. Cook the shrimp to your liking, but don't overcook them. Then, you want to combine rice vinegar, soy sauce, and water and use that mixture to cook your quinoa rather than just water. Then, you want to prepare your sushi toppings, assemble your quinoa sushi bowls, add some sriracha mayo on top, sesame seeds, and black seeds. I was preparing this for a client, hence why it's in a container like this. But if you were serving it for yourself, just put it in a plate and add some dried seaweed on top. I've seen a few tomato soup recipes floating around on TikTok, so I wanted to show you our version. Spice them with ginger. Sounds weird, but it's incredible. Let's get to it. Add 12 half tomatoes to a roasting tray, face side up. Add a big knob of ginger and a bulb of garlic. Season and roast for 20 minutes at 180 degrees. Degrees. At this point, add your red onion and your chili, which have a lower cooking time. Roast for a further 25 minutes. Once everything is nice and caramelized, take the tray out the oven. Peel your ginger and squidge out your garlic, which will be lovely and sweet and roasted. 
Add it all to a pan on a medium heat, add the veggie stock and mix it all together. Back to the roasting tray, the sticky bits are pure concentrated flavour, so do not get rid of them. Add hot water, deglaze and pour that into the pan as well. Blend everything together and then add a tin of coconut milk, a splash of vinegar for twang, salt and pepper. Mix everything together, reduce it down until it's nice and thick and you're good to go. Serve in bowls with hot buttered toast, topped with some chopped coriander and a swirl of olive oil and coconut milk. Enjoy mob. we go. Uh, anyway, combine glutinous rice flour, sugar, salt and water. Give that a stir and put it in the microwave for two minutes. Take it out and give it a stir and then back in the microwave for 30 seconds. Then you can pound it until it becomes really, really stretchy. Then coat in roasted soybean powder and cut them into little chunks. Then they're pretty much ready to eat. It's really that simple and they're so Diego good. And cream cheese filled fluffy sweet bread. And if you remember from about a day ago, Diego, day ago, not Diego. What? If you remember from about a day ago or so, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I actually failed at making these, but this time today came out so much better. I don't think I'm speaking English right now. So I think I'm going to start this voice over over again. Should I start it over again? I think so. I think I'm just going to keep going with it because I've tried to record this voice over 10 times and I keep messing up. So this is probably the best it's going to get, but Right now, um, my dough has been resting. I'm cutting it into eight sections, into eight dough balls. You guys already know how to do this, I believe. And then I'm going to roll it out and cut it and like how I'm doing in this clip. Yep. Putting my cream cheese filling and adding my mangoes, folding in the sides and rolling it up and adding it to a prepared baking sheet or baking dish. It's not a sheet. Oh my God. I got 350 for about 25 to 35 minutes. I finished mine off with a powdered sugar glaze and I was done. Into this. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make my crispy spring onion pancakes with a spicy sour dipping sauce. First, combine your flour, a pinch of salt and hot water in a bowl and mix it with a wooden spoon. When it's cool enough to handle, get your hands in there and start kneading it and it'll form a really soft dough. For the filling, combine sesame oil, a pinch of salt and some flour to form a paste. Then finally, chop your spring onions. Bash some Szechuan peppercorns in a mortar and pestle until it's finely ground. On a lightly floured surface, divide your dough into four pieces. Shape each piece into circles and then roll it as thinly as possible. Brush over your sesame paste, a Sprinkle the Szechuan peppercorns and loaves of spring onions. Then tightly roll your pancake to form a thick sausage. Then you just wind the sausage around to make a snail shape. Gently roll this out so it's about the thickness of a pound coin. For your spicy dipping sauce, you want to combine grated garlic, grated ginger, soy sauce, black Chinese vinegar, sesame oil, salt, and crispy chili oil bits. Gently fry your pancakes in some oil until golden brown on either side. This should take about two to three minutes. Cut each pancake into quarters and serve it with your spicy dipping sauce. I can't wait for you to try it.